This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. I'm doing some beginning machine knitting lessons. And one of the things that I wanted to address was whether you could make ribbing without buying a ribber. There are a lot of great old machines out there that don't have ribbers. In fact, I own a wonderful machine called an MK70. They didn't even manufacture a ribber for that machine. So here's a way to latch up ribbing on a machine that has no ribber. First of all, I cast on and knit a few rows with waist yarn and then a row with ravel cord over every other needle. And then I've just placed a slip knot on this end needle and I'm going to, to go wrap, e-wrap on in the hook area of the needle and pull it back through the ravel cord. I'm doing that on across. I'm doing it a little tightly. Then I'm going to bring the yarn to the left where I have the carriage and I'm threading the carriage. And this one I didn't knit through was actually a slip knot. And I think I'll bring it through too, just to make it a little easier to knit through. So I have one row on every other needle, and I e-wrapped it on. And now I'm going to bring out the in-between needles. And let's say that this ribbing is on tension 3. So I have the carriage set on tension 3. And to simplify it, I'm going to go six rows. Very often ribbing will be eight or ten or twelve or fifteen rows, but I should warn you that latching up ribbing can be tedious. So this one's going to be six rows. And here I go. See how it filled in the in-between needles? And this end one didn't knit off, so I'm just going to give it a little push, get it to knit off. Okay, beginning on the far right here, I'm going to latch up a knit stitch. See the purl stitches here? This is going to be a knit stitch. I go under the bottom green bar with the latch tool. I pull out and I drop the stitch so that it all comes unraveled. And then I pick up one bar at a time and I latch that up. The end stitches are actually the most difficult to latch up. So let me get this one. I'm going to start here. Unravel. I catch. See, I'm under that first row, and I don't do anything with it. I just catch the one above it and bring it under. And then I ladder on up. At the top, I put it on the, on the hook and park the hooks back where nothing's going to unravel or, oh, no, nothing's going to unravel or give me trouble. I just want to double check I'm unraveling the right stitch. So here I go. This is the one I'm going to pull. Some people do not like the look of a ribbed cast on. And instead, they like to pick up ribbing from the pieces, knit them without the ribbing, and then pick up um, and make ribbing after. But I've experimented with a lot of ways to cast on with ribbing, and I think it's quite possible to make it attractive enough. Now, with a little practice, you don't have to weave in and out like this anymore to pick up a, a stitch. You can just kind of go straight front and back. Get that first one, and then you see you can just go like this. There's really not a need if you can push straight back under the machine, then, then that gets rid of the need to weave in and out of the different bars. So 
So you can see that in relatively little time, I've gotten across this small sample, and I have one more to do. And it's on the end, so the ones near the end are always the hardest to do. On a real sweater, I like to have two purl stitches on one of the edges and one on the other. On this particular sample, I see that I have a purl stitch on each end. The reason I like to have two on one end is it gives me something to seam with. I, uh, I like to seam one stitch from the edge, so after I would sew the seam, if I had two purls, I would have one showing. And then over on the other side where I had one purl, I would only have the knit showing. Okay, I'm going to knit a few rows on our looser tension because typically when you make a garment, the actual knitting is looser than the ribbing. take this off and get the ribbed edge close to the camera. I'm removing the close pin. I'm removing a weight. I had a claw weight on it. I'm removing a cast on comb. I had a cast on comb on it. I'm getting all kinds of things off. And now I'm removing the ribbing. I had some scrap yarn and some ravel cord. So I'm going to get the ravel cord and the scrap yarn off and give it a little, little bit of a tug. This is how this edge looks, and I think it's quite a tolerable looking cast on. This is how it looks on the inside. So that's a method for latching up ribbing on a machine that has no ribber attachment.